Welcome everyone, Questine here with a discussion about Total War Warhammer 3 Immortal Empires. And in this particular video, I want to talk about my experience that I've had playing the game using Auto Resolve mods. There are several of them. They are going to be linked in the description below of this video. And I have spent time in several campaigns playing with these mods. And here is what I've learned. For the most part, the, these mods do vastly improve the campaign experience that you will have in the game as opposed to the vanilla game. The reason is that what these mods will help you achieve in a campaign is they will cut down, significantly cut down, on the number of battles that you may have to fight manually in minor zones. So what I mean by that is that in a campaign, the vast majority of the battles that you are going to be fighting are going to be settlement battles, and the vast majority of battles that you're going to be fighting in settlements are going to be inconsequential. So, for instance, take an army like this, right? This kind of army would walk over the vast majority of provincial capitals, the vast majority of minor settlements, and if you fight those battles manually, you are able uh, to significantly reduce the casualties. What these mods that I'm using do is allow you to skip fighting these battles manually while still preserving quote unquote the integrity of the difficulty what do i mean by that well i play on legendary very hard the reason i play on legendary very hard is because it creates more interesting campaign situations and makes the ai better in particular battle difficulty which affects on resolve and don't ignore that battle difficulty doesn't just affect ai tactics nor does it just affect the odd resolve it also affects ai aggression so with a higher battle difficulty, then what will end up happening during the course of uh, during the course of your campaign is uh, the AI will just expand more and be able to achieve more. So if I take a look on the map over here, we can see that Greece has taken a decent number of territory, like turn 22. Um, we can see Scarbrand has taken these amount of territory. Volkmar has gone on a crusade. Arkan has wiped out Rapons, and he might just be looking to wipe out Volkmar as well. Uh, but in general, the factions are starting to get their feet, uh, so to speak, to find their feet and are starting to expand. So playing on a higher difficulty, especially battle difficulty, which affects how the AI is going to utilize the resources on the campaign map in an effective manner, does matter does matter however you're going to have to fight a lot of these battles manually even as a faction like cafe in the vanilla game because even though as cafe you have a great army like jade warriors and jade warrior crossbowmen and things like iron hail gunners would do very very well in most manual battles and i'm not sure i can beat nakai over here this might be the one battle that i am not able to defeat uh, but while in general they will, um, while in general, your armies can handle things, and you can even auto-resolve a decent number of, of early game fights. What you will also encounter is plenty of situations where you go up against the battle, or provincial capitals are the worst defenders here. You'll go up against a provincial capital, and you find yourself in the situation of taking ridiculous damage against a minor, uh, against a minor army uh, in that particular uh, capital just because it is a capital. Now, there are mods that will remove the auto-resolve benefit that settlements do have, because settlements do have an auto-resolve benefit. So, you can use these two mods. So, there's one for minor settlements, there's one for provincial capitals, so you don't have to fight these pointless sieges as often. If you have a good enough army, very few siege battles are actually going to be worth fighting in the first place. So what the mod will do, what these two mods will do, is will help prevent you, uh, prevent you from having to fight those battles. However, that is only part of the solution as I see it, because legendary or very hard battle difficulty also adds an auto-resolve modifier. The higher the difficulty that you select for battle difficulty, the better the auto-resolve will be for the AI. So while you can remove the unresolved benefit the AI, uh, th that settlements get, you are not removing the AI, the AI auto-resolve modifier. So even so, you will still take a significant amount of damage in battles where you really shouldn't. That's where the third mod comes in. And it, this is not the perfect solution. I made this very clear in the video where I discussed it initially. I didn't consider it a perfect solution even when I installed it the first time. 
and it's clearly not the perfect solution. But it is, from my perspective, a substantially better dynamic uh, to deal with than you might have to otherwise. Uh, the reason is, uh, the reason in behind that is due to the fact that you have a mod that's going to add your own odd resolve modifier. So if you want to play on, say, Legendary Very Hard Battle Difficulty or higher battle difficulty so the AI is using its resources, then using that modifier is what I'd consider essential. I'm not quite sure what that mod is, what difficulty that mod is designed for. It might be designed for the base game. I play on Legendary Very Hard and I'm, I use, I'm using the highest possible version, the 0 0.7 modifier, which is not necessarily made for a race like a Fae. But it is with these mods, with the removal of out resolve benefits, and with the removal, uh, or with and with uh, uh, an out resolve uh, modifier for the player, that I encounter so a lot of battles that actually make sense. Far more so than in the base game. So, in the base game, the actual result I would get in a lot of battles. Like take for instance this army, right? If I were to fight this, if I were to <laughs> resolve this battle in the vanilla game, I, the actual result here would be a loss. But consider this army, this situation. Most of these guys are Dread Spears. There are some Bleak Swords, there are some Dark Shards. But I have a ton of Jade Warrior Crossbowmen. I have, um, I have Yan Bo. I have an Alchemist. There is no chance that this particular army over here it loses to this. Most of these guys are garrisons. They have a level 7 lord. I have a level 23 lord. There is zero chance that this particular army, but even with the modded version, it would still say medium casualties. So it's not, this is not the perfect solution. It is a band aid to a problem, but for the most part, the vast majority of battles you will fight will actually make sense. To give you some context, the actual, the actual battles that I encounter, and I've tested this out quite a bit. For me personally, when I'm playing a campaign and I'm playing battles manually, the actual casualties I generally take, and I'm not using any kind of special fancy tactics, but the casualties I take, I would take on easy or even better than easy on auto resolve. Now, you don't want to use easy battle difficulty uh, because it will cause plenty of issues. It will make the AI very passive. It's not ideal. Normal is, no, my casualties in general are either easy or even better than easy. In some cases, when I screw up or I use armies improperly, it can be something like normal. Very rarely, if not ever, have I gotten a result that would be comparable to like a, a result on very hard. But I want to play on very hard. I want to get that AI aggression. I want the AI to build empires. But I, at the same time, I don't want to deal with a lot of these pointless battles. Now, mind you, this is not a bad example. Like this battle would actually be, at least be a full-on proper battle, would yeah. involve an entire stack of troops. But most battles are not like that. Most battles are against, like, garrisons. Like, consider this. We have... Um, now, why am I fighting this battle over here? Well, because... Um, let's just say I want to get the situation here. I want to... Get a stun I want to get Iron Spike for a Stankia. I want to give it to a Stankia. I want then want to give this particular settlement to um, to uh, to a Stankia, make an alliance with her, and have her deal with everything else in the north while I go expand south. So basically, I want a Stankia to be my northern shield. That's the reason I want to fight that particular battle um, in in that particular case. Now, is is it all perfect? No, it is not. In fact it can go the other way around. When I was recording this campaign and I posted it on YouTube, some people complained about like what happened to Lokir. Fair enough, there were bullshit victories against Lokir. Not all of them, to be clear, but you can certainly get away with far more than you would have otherwise gotten away with. And so what I would say is that the mods do create a better campaign situation. They do create a better campaign dynamic. They allow you to play the battles you want to fight, the battles that are actually interesting, 
against full stacks as opposed to spending like 80% of your campaign. This is absolutely true. Or 99% of battles that you might fight in a campaign, you would win with ease. So they're not teaching you anything. They're not making you a better player. In fact, quite the opposite. The battles you are fighting in a campaign, the tactics you're using in those battles make you a worse player because they just like corner camp and you'll win. Well, that won't work in every situation. So uh, with this mod, this can improve the, uh, the situation and it will create uh, battles where you will have to devote significant energy and effort if you understand that when you should draw the line like auto resolving the kai or auto resolving low care which is a, something i did probably shouldn't have uh, is probably something i shouldn't have done fair enough but like snitch the celestial riverlands uh riverlands mass mundi oh yes those battles i would have won easily in fact point of fact and i played the campaign as yan bo the first campaign i played as him in immortal empires i defeated a two to one army against mass mundi so me wiping out mass mundi when i never faced more than one of his armies and maybe a garrison is not unrealistic at all in a campaign so the results i actually got were matched reality but it also allows you to use greater variety of units. But it's not perfect. It's a band-aid. It's a band-aid because armor still matters and auto resolve. It just matters. It just means you can get away with less. Uh, or you can get away with more unit types than you did before. But the same kind of dynamic still exists. Like if you have a balanced army like this, your melee units are still going to take significantly more damage than your ranged units. Those kind of things will still occur at a lesser rate. Having units with lower armor will still affect you in a negative way in terms of your auto resolve situation. So it, again, it isn't a perfect solution. Far from it, but it's uh, certainly a better dynamic than General. what we have to deal with in the base game. Just don't go crazy on it. I certainly have gone crazy in some of the campaigns I've played and I've learned, you know, you have to restrain yourself to some extent, but it can and does make your campaign uh, campaign situation significantly better if you're like me and you're just sick and tired of fighting every single seed battle in the fucking game <laughs> that's the one thing i hate or playing a campaign as caven and having to fight like 90 percent of the battles and you you know you're going to win simply because you're playing playing skaven uh playing skaven and you have a poor out resolve score this that's how thing this these mods will help you go senior signing out stay tuned for more